Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look today at cutting out hair from a bit of a difficult background. I feel like there's difficult backgrounds, there's busy backgrounds, and there's like everything in between all the way down to just like your basic gray paper background. So we're just going to do a more difficult hair selection, talk to you a little bit about how to make difficult hair selections uh, over difficult to select backgrounds. So that's what we're covering today. Let's jump in and get started right away. Okay, here we are in Photoshop and a couple things that I like to do uh, when I'm dealing with an image like this where the hair is, I mean, just a very similar color to the background. The background's not necessarily clean. It's a complex background. It's a blurry background. Um, so we've got some different challenges here uh, that we need to deal with when we're selecting her and moving her off this background. Uh, first thing that I like to do, it just kind of makes everything better, is just enlarge the image. So I'm going to go image, image size, and I'm probably gonna double it. So I'm gonna go percent and I'm gonna say, yeah, give me that at 200%, hit okay. And what we'll end up doing is when we bring it into our new composite, because we went up 200%, we'll half size it. So we'll just cut it down to 50% of its size. And once we've done that, we're gonna go to the, uh, the usual customers, that being over here, a quick selection tool, We'll try hitting it with a little select subject first and see what it happens. Uh, it's always worth it to do this. And if it just doesn't work out great, no big deal. You can get rid of it and uh, start afresh. And as we can see, it does a pretty decent job. It even kind of picks out a lot of the hair. We're going to have to do a lot of work here on this edge, but that's what we're here for. Uh, and we also have this little bit here in the middle. So we'll grab our quick selection tool, hold down alter option to just subtract from the selection. And let's see if we can just grab this bit of the selection here. Great. This little bit of selection left in here, we're going to worry about that in a little bit. And I can also see down here around the body, the edges of the dress, things like that, like right there, not quite a perfect selection right over here, not quite perfect. Perfect. But we're really going to probably spend the bulk of our time working on the hair. Um, that obviously would be stuff you would go and clean up and adjust in select and mask and later on with lasso tools or with the mask and the brush tool, however you prefer working with that stuff. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to try to pick up a little bit more of the edge of the hair where it runs into the white. I'll just slide my tablet right over here and grab the quick selection tool again. And then just begin brushing out over here, adding to this selection. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time because see what happens sometimes because the color is so similar, it's going to try to jump on you. So then I'll just undo that. Maybe I'll start from down here. And I almost don't mind if I get a little bit too much. You're going to see we have a, a nice, interesting way of dealing with some of these edges uh, later. All right. It doesn't look like it'll let me get much more up there with quick select. So at this point, you go in and we just get to work by hand. I like to use the lasso tool, hold down shift. This is where it's very helpful to have a tablet because you can kind of roughly follow the edges of the hair. Again, this is not going to be our finished edge. We're just trying to make sure that we get uh, the bulk of the information that we can see with our eyes, uh, because we, we don't have a lot of information we're playing with here. So we're going to try to uh, make sure that we, we get and keep as much of it as we can. All right, that's not bad. Looks pretty decent down here. This is a bit of a mess, so we'll come in and clean this up a little bit. And I think right off the bat, this looks like it's probably a job for the lasso tool, where we're going to hold down alter option first, Come through and just knock out some of this stuff in here, right? Just a little bit too dark. It's definitely not part of the hair. Uh, and kind of even some of the stuff that's left is a little questionable. And then we'll come into here and try to just get a couple of these like little spikies. And if nothing more, these are just going to give us kind of a, a place to paint in some of the replacement hair that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. You'll see a little bit about that in just a second. All right, so something like that's good. Again, we're not worrying about her arms and her shirt and the skirt and everything. Uh, this is probably good. And then we're going to come up here and choose a select and mask. Depending on the tool you're using, you may just have to go select select a mask. No big deal either way. And in this case, what I've done, well, I, I did it before we started recording, but this color, the default color is red. I switched it to green because, well, because her dress and everything is this reddish pinkish color. And if you're going to be going in and cleaning up stuff like this, it's going to be nice. Let's say you take the brush tool. It'll be nice to be able to say, all right, I know that I'm just painting away this stuff up to her arm, or really, I guess I should be doing this against her dress, right? Again, we're not really worried about her arms and stuff like that. I'm really more concerned about the hair and what's going on up here. So let's uh, let's start with just this little bit here uh, that's in here. I just bumped the letter X, by the way. That's why the color went away for a quick second. And in here, we could try a few things. I think the easiest thing is going to be just use the brush tool and hold down alter option and just paint this away. So we're going to cover this with the green, which is going to mean that uh, we're just not selecting that. So I'm going to make my brush a little smaller here. We're not really not selecting it. We're not going to be outputting a selection. We're going to be outputting a mask. It means that that stuff is going to be knocked away with our mask. 
All right, there we have that. And then comes the, the moment uh, to begin working on the edges of the hair. And of course, typically when you have some decent contrast or something, you can use the Refine Edge brush tool. And we can try that here, but I have a feeling if I run over this with a Refine Edge brush tool, it's just gonna create this big gummy mess of I don't even know what. Let's just look to see what Photoshop does here. Give it a minute, the image file is massive. You can see it's it's not the greatest. It's actually not horrible, and this is why I sometimes continue to try this. Um, it's not gonna look very good in our composite, but I think it'll give us something to work with. It'll, uh, even, if, even if all it gives us to work with is something we can use as a bit of a guide. So I'm gonna keep going around this hair and just see if I can use the Refine Edge brush tool here and all along this edge. Just remember this edge, she's got this super blonde, platinum blonde, I don't even know what you call it, and just that the paint on the windows is just hopping white, and uh, it just creates an edge that Photoshop really can't pick out. I mean, this is really a mess in here, right? In fact, this might be something where we grab the brush tool, and we make the brush tool a little bigger, I'm just using my square bracket keys, and just paint over that straight up and just say, look, I know all of that is her hair in there, so I'm not going to allow you, Refine Edge, uh, to go messing up that edge and taking big chunks of stuff that's not, that, that is hair, that's area I wanna keep. And I'll move over the hair up here. Let's just see how this reacts to this. And again, a bit of the same thing where you're gonna just do this a little bit at a time, grab the brush tool and just go over and say, no, I definitely know I wanna save the hair. We're not gonna have a lot of edge detail, which is kind of a problem. But again, this is gonna be part of the magic of what we're doing. We are going to, uh, we're gonna to try to rebuild some of that. There's really not a lot of magic. It's more like um, TLC, tender love and care or elbow grease because we're gonna to have to put the work in here. All right, let's come down along this edge that we created with our lasso tool. And now out here, Refine Edge almost has something to work with because the window gets a little darker, so the hairs are obviously a bit lighter contrasting over that. So maybe it can pick some of them up. Let's try painting over it and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, sort of, I guess. Let's move down here and grab this part of the hair and we are good. So that's that's the next step, is just coming in and really using your tools in here from the Refine Edge uh, brush tool to the straight brush tool. And sometimes even the, the lasso tools can be useful depending on uh, how things are going for you. And don't worry at this point about your edge being perfect. Little spoiler, it's not going to be. And the global refinements, they don't really help us here with something like this, um, at least not in their in their current iteration uh, but we can do a bit more with this so i'm going to scroll down i don't want to mess with decontaminate color a lot of the sort of um algorithmic ai type stuff here in photoshop when you have edges that are this close you know it's the electronic eye so if it can't see that edge and pixels and light value and tone and color and stuff like that it's gonna have a really difficult time knowing where to decontaminate the color and with what color it should decontaminate or what color it is decontaminating, I should say. So I'm just gonna output this to a new layer with layer mask and hit okay. All right, so we've got what we've got. Uh, some of her skin is a little janky and wonky and stuff. Again, I'm gonna try to ignore that. That stuff does tend to bug me a lot, uh, but we're gonna try to ignore that. I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna bring this image into another background. So what I'll do with the layer selected, I'll just hit Command C to copy it. I'm going to bump over to my winter photo, Command or Control V to paste in place. And now we've got her over a background where we're going to be using her. Uh, number one, I'm going to just hit Command or Control T. I'm going to rotate her so she's more straight up and down for this image. Obviously, we don't have a place to really lean her elbow like she was leaning, but I think we can still work out the composition so it looks decent. And there we have it. Free Transform jumped a little on me there. But... We have her, remember, still at 200%, so she's a little blurry. Uh, but what I do want you to take note of here is when we zoom in on the edges, uh, we have a lot kind of more that we can work with because we have her so big. And if we make it look good uh, when it's this big, it should probably just look better when it's even smaller. So uh, in this case, I can really kind of break things down. I can select individual parts of her hair. Like let's say up here, where we have this kind of weird halo-y thing going on. I can select the layer mask, right? And I can use my lasso tool and I can just say, look, I'm gonna loop over this here. I'm gonna see if I can do something with this. And then hit Command or Control L, which is gonna bring up levels. Now we have the mask selected. So we're working on the layer mask and I can begin saying like, all right, can I just tone that down a little bit by flooding it with more blacks? Or do I need to bring more detail back and flood it with lights? No, I definitely need to, I definitely need to crunch down on some of what's going on there. So I'll go ahead and do that and hit okay, Command or Control D and I clean that up. Now this still looks bad, I know, but we're, we're just getting it to a point where we can do more work with it. So uh, here where we have kind of this darky halo stuff, off. We're going to just select that. We still have the layer mask selected. Command or Control L. Let's see if increasing the black, we just kind of clear some of that stuff away. There we have it. Command or Control D to deselect. And then I would just go over the edge like this 
and just clean up what I can. Some of this stuff here I don't mind because, again, we're going to come back to that later. Here we have a bit of dark haloing that's going on here. Maybe even up. If I hold down Shift, I'll get it all the way up to here. Commander Control L in this case and just increase the black. Don't do it so to the point where you just get this really harsh, nasty looking edge. You still definitely want it to be soft, uh, and especially in the case of hair, there's going to be transparency. It's that semi-opaqueness that you're dealing with and working with. Uh, whoop, we don't want to crop this image. I grabbed the wrong tool. And there we have uh, this bit of the hair. You can see there's something floating around up there where the mask is not quite perfect. Uh, what we can do there is just quickly grab our brush tool. I'm going to right click and grab just a big soft edge brush. I'm going to paint with my foreground color set to a black. And I'll just paint over that really quickly. I know. I know extracurricular activity activities here with the tutorial. Uh, but now at this point, uh, we, we're ready to move on to the next thing. Now, one of the things that is just a go-to for me in cases like this is the soft light brush. So set your brush to the soft light blend mode, reduce the opacity, and you go in and paint with black and clean up edges. See how much that does? Well, in something like this, um, this is not necessarily the effect that we want uh, because when you have hair that's very straight like this, using this effect, you tend to just get rid of all the texture on the edge of the hair and make things kind of look bad. Now down here, like on her hands where things just need, you know, to be decolored and, and not have all that fringing and stuff, that technique can be really good. If I move her up a little bit and we get here down on the side of her shirt, we can clean this stuff up on the side of her arm, like this kind of really light haloing, right? You can just make that stuff go right away with the soft light brush. So it's great for stuff like that. But in terms of protecting the integrity of some of the texture that we're trying to hold onto here in the hair, uh, not the greatest. So what do we do? Well, I think the best answer is two different techniques. One of them is using the clone stamp tool up on a new layer and adding in hairs uh, where you see fit. And the second technique is creating a, a, a specific brush for uh, doing that with your hair. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to show you how to create this brush. I'm going to create a new document here. Let's just go 500 by 500. It's my go-to for this particular type of brush. Create that document. And I'll zoom in here. Create a new layer. Grab the brush tool. Uh, we don't want it to set to overlay or soft light or any of that stuff. Oh, I was using it in overlay. You can actually use an overlay or soft light. Soft light just tends to be a little gentler. Uh, now here, what we're going to do is I'm going to make my brush. Well, let me right click. Oh, I just click clicked. Let me right click. I want my brush to be very hard and I want the sides to be not very hard. And I want to be painting with my foreground color set to black. And then I'm going to click a few times, something like so. I'm going to make the brush a little smaller. So the idea is here we're just creating a brush that's basically comprised of a bunch of little dots. And if it seems confusing, don't worry. It kind of is a little confusing, but not really when you see how it works. You'll understand right away why we're doing this. And then you can just shut off the background, make sure they're on layer one, and go edit, define brush preset, and you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to go hairs. And then you're done with this document. You can close it out. And back here in our original document, the hair document, uh, I have this brush, which is just all of these dots. If I make it a lot smaller, if I right click and make the size a whole lot smaller, I can go in and paint on the mask with this, number one. And by painting away some of the hair, I begin to create new texture. Now you see it's that really spotty, dotty, uh, dippled, stippled, whatever kind of texture. We don't want that. We want to open up the brush settings Go to brush tip shape and reduce the spacing all the way down. By the way, you can also turn on shape dynamics, turn on like pen pressure and get some uh, you know additional control if you're using a, a tablet. So I can come into here and just say, look, just paint some of this away on the mask. So I'm just painting some of this away, restoring some of that texture to her hair. Now, this may be a little bit too much. The effect may be a little too strong and that's perfectly fine. You can always adjust opacity and fill. Uh, we have a lot of options here. Uh, with our brushes and our brush tools. So in this case, I think I may actually turn it down to about 30% and just try to go over this and, and make it work a little bit more effectively than it is. Something like so. Let me zoom out a little. And we just add in that texture, preserve the texture. Now, if maybe we don't want to just live in the mask or you know we're trying to add to the mask, but we had a brightly colored background and now colors are coming back on the edge of the hair, that's totally fine. You can create a new layer and just call this layer hairs or hair or whatever. And what you would do is use your brush tool and just hold down alter option and sample a color and begin painting hairs back in. So you can expand uh, where the hair was going. This, by the way, is also a great technique if you're trying to make hair fuller and you have a bunch of uh, holes in somebody's hair and you're just trying to kind of, you know, boost things up a little bit. 
go for it and just use one of these hair brushes and uh, you'll be able to really, really change the way the head of uh, somebody's head of hair looks uh, and really add a lot of volume to their hair uh, using this particular technique. So I just go over the edges really, really quickly, uh, maybe take, you know, five, six minutes, just really clean them up. Um, I like using the brush tool most of the time, uh, but like I said, you can also come in with uh, the clone stamp tool and just literally clone texture and color and everything. And, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It works really well. Some people prefer it. Uh, this is what I prefer though. And uh, I just go over the edges a bunch and, and keep doing it until it looks pretty decent. All right. And once you've gone over the edges and you've finished recreating the hair texture, you can see how much we can just totally rebuild there at the top and just make it look so much, so much better. What I like to do then is select both of the layers and you can right click and choose to link those layers together. And now just by selecting one layer, you can click and drag and they're both gonna move together. Uh, what we'll do here is transform her, make her, well first we'll half size her right away and just see if that makes her about the proper size and adjust and then we'll just about be finished. So come up here, link uh, the proportions and just say, look, give me 50% of what we had, great and I will commit the change. I like the way it looks. And at this point, we could group it together. I could alter option click on the mask and just you know come in here maybe even with the lasso tool and just say, you know what, I, I don't like the way all this extra stuff out here looks even though there's nothing out there. Uh, but you know sometimes you're, I think they say it's OCD or something like that. Uh, and you just want it all covered up like I do. And you can zoom in at this point and we can do one last selection with the, the mask and try to levels this a little bit. So just command or control L on the entire uh, mask and just say, look, maybe we can clean away a little bit more of that haloing by just increasing the black. We don't need to worry as much about a super duper crunchy edge because we have all that hair texture that we've applied. So I'm just gonna drag my center line over just until I see more of that haloing go down. Just do a quick look over it, make sure everything looks decent. And like this, you know, I got to spend a little bit more time on that and here on this edge. But for the for the amount here that we had to do, we were able to do it really, really quickly. Here I can come in again right here and just again sample the color and just add a, add a few hairs. You know what I mean? Just adding a few hairs. I'm working at like 40% opacity. It just adds so much realism uh, to what you're working on and just helps... Um, I don't know, it just helps it look like, wow, you really got a really complex selection there and it looks pretty good. Now the rest of her, you know, isn't looking the greatest because, well, we need to clean that up a little bit more. But this tutorial is more about getting those really, really difficult hair selections. And probably the last thing I would do here is maybe group her together just as, you know, sort of the model. And then I could paste in a bunch of different adjustment layers. Let me shut off some of this grungy stuff. And then I'll take these layers and they're going to be the ones that kind of help her match the scene a little bit. Uh, just blend in here a little. Throw some grunginess on top of it. And then throw some dust and scratches on it as well. We could even jump in here. Throw just a little, uh, little pre-saved camera raw action stuff here. So I'm going to go layer smart objects, convert to smart object. I know this is kind of going beyond the scope of this tutorial. Uh, but I'm just going to paste in this stuff here. Just a little toning in there. And uh, then I'll turn those textures back on. And we've taken her from a very difficult to extract background, moved her to a totally different scene. Uh, and the key really, again, lest I harp on it one more time, uh, or, well, I just did harp on it one more time. So the edges of the dress and everything, we would spend more time on that. But the, the real key here was going and getting the edge of the hair pulled off of that rather complex background. And that's one technique that I like to use when the color of the hair is very close to the color of the background. So I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. All right, well, there you have it. If you enjoyed this one, check out this tutorial that's appearing on the screen right now, all about a bunch of cool tips and tricks in Photoshop that I think you're really, really gonna love. You can check it out by using that link that appeared on the screen. And thank you for sticking around and watching this video all the way to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it, got it, good. NathanielDodson.vid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.